Hello everyone and welcome to another Free Friday tutorial from SimplyMaya.com. My name is Rick Malava, my nickname on the forum is CTV Ram, and in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to duplicate an object along a path to create the chain that you see here. There are many applications for duplicating objects along a path, and you generally do it in Maya using the uh, two of the commands on its, uh, within its animate tool set, the motion path attached to motion path and also the create animation snapshot tools. I've created a custom shelf here with just these two commands on them because uh, in order to uh, uh, figure out how many of these links we need to create along the path we're going to be executing this command a couple of times and just figuring it out by trial and error. Uh, and so this will just speed the process up a little bit. Let me hide the chain this is a snapshot of this chain uh, as it's animated along this motion path and if I hide it you can see I started out with just a motion path and a single link of the chain and uh, I create an animation uh, of this object moving along the motion path with the attach to motion path option and if I scrub the timeline you can see I have 110 frames and at each frame the link moves and rotates 90 degrees and it moves a distance such that each frame fits or each link fits into the previous link and it also rotates 90 degrees and then the third condition is that the link always is oriented so that it's uh, moving parallel to this path right now it's moving sort of down um, and if I scrub the timeline to the bottom of the path you see it flattens out at the bottom and then it points up at the top so I'm going to show you how we can do this with those two commands uh, attach to motion path and create animation snapshot. So let's hide what I have here so we'll just do everything from scratch. And from the front I'll create a uh, CV curve for my motion path using the uh, CV curve tool in a degree 3 curve and we'll just put down some CVs here and create our curve. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's higher at one end or the other. Um, and then I can come in here after the fact and move some of these points around if I don't like the shape of the curve. Now this isn't necessary at all uh, for purposes of this demo but I it's a good habit to get into of always rebuilding your curve so that your CVs are uniform. Right now this distribution is close to uniform. It's really not too bad but uh, it's just a good habit to get into because if I go to the attributes of this curve uh, right now, my parameterization is good. It's going from 0 to 6, but sometimes when you're working with Maya's NURBS tools, this parameterization can get wonky if you're uh, attaching and detaching things and cutting uh, surfaces, and uh, if this parameterization gets uh, to be non-rational, uh, your results can start to become unpredictable. So it's just a good habit to get into of rebuilding your surfaces and your curves, and it's fairly straightforward to do. I'll just go into Edit Curves, Rebuild Curve, options and right now I can see I have six spans so to rebuild this I want to rebuild the curve uniformly I, I like to build from zero to spans and the process I use is I take the number of spans that are originally in the curve and I double it so that's 12 and rebuild it and you see the curve doesn't change its shape very much uh, but I get a lot more I have an option turned on to show me where my where my uh, edit points are you can see they're evenly distributed in the curve, but now they're quite dense. So I'm going to try to cut this back down to 6 and see if it changes the shape of the curve. And it doesn't. It smooths it out a little bit, and I can always come in and and re reshape this a little bit. But I like the look of it right now. I'm going to make it a little pointier at the bottom there. Okay. So I'm happy with that. So there's my cur there's my motion path that I want to build my chain along. Okay, so then the next thing to do is create a single link in the chain. So we're going to create a polygon torus primitive, and from the top view, I'm going to go into its creation node and I'm going to change its subdivisions and axis and height to 10. And I do that to reduce the geometry, and also I get these uh, nice flat sections uh, that are parallel to the x axis such that I can select these vertices right here and stretch it out to form a chain link. Now if I come back up here, uh, when I attach this link to the motion path, it's going to attach to the motion path uh, by it, this, uh, its object axis, which right now you can see is not centered. So I'm going to go to my custom shelf here and center the pivot. And then once again, this isn't necessary, but I'm going to use the X and middle mouse 
button to snap to the origin there and then I'm going to go to the scale tool and scale the link down to the size I want the link to be each link to be all right and so now I'm ready to attach this link to the motion path so I select the link in the motion path I go to my custom shelf select the attach to motion path option I'm going to reset its options its settings and what I want to use is the start and end time to control how many of these links I create. So I'm going to select the start end time range radio button. And then I'm going to change this. Well, I'm going to leave it at the defaults right now. It's not going to be enough, but I'll show you um, the process here by doing this. The other thing I need to do is, is decide what the front direction is that I want to always stay parallel to this curve and if I select the move manipulator the x-axis seems to be the logical choice. Keep in mind this may not be the same for your model but right now x is a good direction for the uh, the front of the uh, object and I also need to have an up axis which just happens to also be correspond to y which is also a default setting. The only difference is I want the objects uh, the vector for the world up axis I want to be the objects uh, up axis. So I'm going to go into here and change it from vector to object. And now with the object selected in the curve, if I hit apply, you'll see the object snaps to the start of the curve. It's oriented with its front parallel to the curve and the up axis pointing inward. And it, I see a 1 and a 30 for 30 keyframes. And if I scrub the timeline now, you see that there are 30 keyframes and the link moves along that path and orients itself according to the front axis and the up axis that I've defined. The next thing I want to do though is duplicate this ring at every keyframe and that's very simply done by selecting the animation snapshot and the only thing you have to do here is match the start and end time with the start and end time of your attached to motion path animation which is 30 and if I select the ring and apply it you see I get 30 copies of that ring of that link along this path and the orientation is pro uh, you know maintains the proper orientation it's just it's not rotating 90 at each location and I clearly don't have enough links uh, to make the change so now uh, this is just a simple matter of trial and error to get this correct I'm gonna go and hit the Z key to back up a couple times and we had 30 in that last in that first try so let's um, let's double it to 60 Okay, and hit apply, and then to visualize it, I'll just once again make an animation snapshot. And if I zoom in here, you see it actually works out very good. Each link is going to fit inside the previous link with just a little tiny gap in there. So the only thing I need to do now is rotate it 90 at each keyframe. So I'm going to just back up one step this time, and I'm going to keep the motion path attached to motion path. So you see it's moving along the motion path now. And the only thing I need to do now is at each frame I need it to rotate 90 degrees. And if I go to its motion path creation node and I look at this property for twist and I I scrub it, you see that the ring rotates. So I'm just going to I'm just going to key that property to rotate this ring 90 degrees at each keyframe. So I'll set this back at back to 0 and I'm on frame 1. And what I'll do is select the front twist, right click and say key selected. Okay, and you see this little manipulator uh, gizmo pops up when I do that. And then I'm going to scrub to the last frame of the animation, which is 60. And what I want it to do is rotate 90 at each frame. So I need it to rotate 60 times 90, right? So uh, just to make sure that I don't do bad math here, 60 times 90 equals 5,400. Uh, 5, so in the last frame in the twist value uh, property I want to put 5400 and then I want to select the right click on the twist front twist property and say key selected and you see you get another little manipulator pops up here at the end and so now if I scrub back to the beginning you see at each frame it's rotating 90 and so now all I need to do is duplicate this at each keyframe and to do that I go to create animation snapshot verify that my start and end time matches the start and end time of my animation and hit apply. Now if you get this error down here it just means that you had the uh, object selected from when you uh, generated the attached to motion path and Maya doesn't like that for some reason so just deselect it, reselect it and then hit apply 
and there you go. And there you go. We've created a chain by duplicating this link along this motion path using Maya's attach to motion path and create animation snapshot. This has been another Free Friday tutorial from simplymaya.com and my name is Rick Malava and I hope you guys find this helpful in your modeling. Thank you.